Good morning, my friends. Happy New Year. No, I haven't lost my mind. Advent is the beginning of the church year. So we, we see a Thanksgiving back there. We see Christmas ahead. And this is a most wonderful season to be gathering together in the name of our Lord. We're so glad you're here. I just want to remind you that the life of the church is as busy as ever, even though we can't have that face-to-face -face contact. We are looking forward to a very special Christmas Eve service. You're going to hear some details about that this week, and I'm going to wait for our church council president, Mary Ann, to tell you more about that. So uh, that's coming, and we'll, we'll have good news for you. Second of all, we continue uh, our Gift of Hope program, and you know that is where we ask you to help us provide gifts for young people. Uh, they're new, they're unwrapped. You drop them off here at the church during the week, and we have a very ambitious goal of, I think, 320 toys, some amazing number of toys for kids that are like um, six to eight, um, maybe a little older. So eight to 12, eight to 12, eight to 12. So do a good work, job on that. Um, bring them by. We'd love to have them. And know that we are really cranking up for Christmas through this Advent season. The other thing I want to tell you about is that we have some wonderful children's time planned. So make sure the young people are with you for each of these services. I don't want them to miss it. We light this beautiful wreath. We have special children's time that will focus on the season. So all of you should make an effort to watch as a family. That would be great. So here we go. May God bless our worship today. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God, wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear the glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. reading from Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel. I will cause a righteous branch to spring up, and this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Today we light the candle on our Advent wreath, the prophecy candle. It is a reminder that the prophets foretold the coming of God's promised one, who would bring forgiveness and salvation to all. We wait and watch. Jesus is coming into the world. We light the candle of hope.
Let us pray, Lord. Help us to keep the candle's light shining in our lives. You are our hope and our salvation. You are Emmanuel, God with us. Fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit that we, we may abound in your joy and hope this Advent season. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Hey, good morning, boys and girls, moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas, the entire family of Apostles Lutheran Church. I'm so glad to see you. Today, we celebrate new beginnings. Yes, we just had a big Thanksgiving dinner, didn't we? I hope you did. I know I did. Uh, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. But now in the church, we celebrate the very beginning of a new season and a new church year. We call this season Advent. Can you say that word at home? Say it together. Advent. And it really comes from a Latin word that means coming. That God is coming to us. Adventus. God is approaching and you know what that's talking about. What are we getting ready for in Advent, boys and girls? We wait four weeks until what very special day? Christmas, right? Christmas, that's right. And I have the neatest things to talk about today. I'm going to start with this. Can you imagine anything more beautiful than this? Ruth East created this out of solid mahogany, and she scroll-sawed it to look incredibly beautiful. And it is a cross that reminds me of the various aspects of the birth of Jesus. We can start down here this week and talk about that. I want to share some other things with you, but thank you, Ruth, for this beautiful, beautiful cross. I'm going to call it our Advent Christmas cross, because we're talking about it in Advent, but it points in the center to Jesus' birth. An absolutely beautiful thing to look at and talk about. So that is one thing I want to talk about. And then this is the other. You've already seen the lighting of the Advent wreath, right? This is our Advent wreath, and it's like a wreath you might have on the wall or on your door at home. But this one sits on a stand, and it has four candles and one beautiful candle in the middle. Guess what each candle is for? Right, there's one for each week while we wait for Jesus. We're waiting for Jesus, his coming, his birth, right? <clears throat> the first candle you heard is the candle of prophecy, or I like to call it the candle of hope. We mentioned both of those. I'm going to talk about in my preaching today the theme of hope, that we're waiting for Jesus anxiously and joyfully and actively because we're looking forward to that time. Jesus will come again. Jesus came, Jesus comes, and Jesus will come again. That's what we say. So the candle of hope reminds us that 
For so many years, people waited for Jesus to be born in Bethlehem. And Jesus was born and came to us. And now, those of us who know Jesus are waiting for him to come again. Candle number one, the candle of hope. I'm going to talk about each of those each week. And the third candle is an interesting one. The third week is kind of a, a celebration of joyful expectation. Jesus is almost here. But we have candle one, candle two, candle three, the color of blue. Did you notice my stole? It's blue because of the color of hope, believe it or not. It's like the sky. It goes on forever. And it gives us this great feeling. I, I think of in Florida, you have the blue sky and you have the blue water, right? And the green all around us. We're so lucky to have that. The color of hope. And the candle in the middle, Christmas Eve, Jesus is born. This is Jesus' candle. <clears throat> We're waiting to light that on Christmas Eve. So what a beautiful wreath, by the way. This has, I can tell you, pine cones and beautiful little Christmas balls. It has fern and it has uh, pine and it has uh, um, holly. Oh my goodness, and a beautiful blue bow. What a wonderful, wonderful way to celebrate our waiting. And I do want to do a close-up here. If I, can I walk forward? I'm going to do that. I want to start down here at the bottom of the cross. Today I want to look at the shepherds, right? The shepherds were out in the fields taking care of their sheep when there was good news to be shared. And what was that good news? Jesus was born. And the first message came from the angels <clears throat> to the shepherds. There they are. And then next week we'll share some more. And each week, um, one way or another, we're, we're, by, the, by the way, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to hear from some other friends in our congregation who have good news to share with you, boys and girls, moms and dads, and everybody else. So be with us every week. Advent is a time of expectation and joy, and you may be very surprised as well at what we have for you. So thank you. Thank you. Ruth, thanks again for this. Thank you for this beautiful wreath, and already it's starting to look like we are well along our way to greeting Jesus on Christmas Day. That will be wonderful. Boys and girls, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, everybody, have a great week. See you next time. A reading from Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake in your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your known, name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eyes have seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take a hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the, our potter. We all work the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now, consider we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel according to Mark. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. And from the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also... When you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home, he puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commends the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and our coming Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this year has been long on the surprises and short on hope, hasn't it? But the first candle on our Advent wreath reminds us that hope will win the day. And that's the first piece of good news I have for you on this first Sunday in Advent. It's officially countdown time. The moment the red cranberry sauce was wiped off my chin... <laughs> and the tablecloth was removed and perhaps prepared for the laundry. Black Friday began, didn't it? And with Black Friday comes the countdown of the diminishing days until Christmas. The tick-tock of passing time is supposed to induce us into a buying panic and jumpstart our frenzied consumption. And you know, it pretty much works, doesn't it? Yeah. But the church has its own countdown to Christmas. It's called the season of Advent. And instead of being a time of consumer manic panic, Advent is a time of preparation for the gift of a miraculous presence. This preparation we're about is not decking the halls or trimming the tree, as much fun as that is, as much as we look forward to it. This preparation is not about baking cookies or wrapping packages either. The preparation we talk about is a truth which comes into the world, not abstract, pure, or antiseptic clean, but cradled in dirt and mangered in mystery and full of hope. On this first Sunday of Advent, we're called to ready our lives, to receive our disorienting God. But we're always hopeful. Hopeful as we wait for God coming again into our lives. As I said earlier with our children, Jesus came in Bethlehem. Jesus comes each day into our lives as he promises to be with us through the Holy Spirit. And Jesus will come again at the last day. And we will embrace him and he will embrace us, our Lord and Savior. Isaiah reminds us, waiting is difficult for impatient people. 
Listen to the words again. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. From age past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God beside you who works for those who wait for him. And finally, I love this. O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. The handy work of God. Each of us embraced by that God. And then in Mark's gospel, Jesus reminds us to keep awake. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Advent bids us be alert. I could have brought a, uh, an alarm clock here. Some people think I should have that on my pulpit at all times. I want to tell you a quick story, not in my text, but it's this. In my internship church in Worcester, Massachusetts, there was carved into the pulpit right about here a space for a clock. And that's right. It was to be sure the preacher knew when he started and when he stopped. And I was directed to that from the very first day I preached. As you see, it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked a bit. Back to my text. <laughs> We're called to wake up. Wake up to the impending gift of the new beginnings that Christ offers. Wake up to the first baby steps of the kingdom entering the world through a stable, through animals and through straw, through earthly means. And wake up from our sleepwalking through a life that sometimes seems so meaningless, embracing the purpose, the voices that are calling out to us that God is with us and are so easily forgotten. I came across um, MLK, Martin Luther King, uh, quotation again this week, and it goes like this, and it has special appropriateness, I think, for the day. One of the great liabilities of life is that all too many people find themselves living amid a great period of social change, and yet they fail to develop the new attitudes, the new mental responses that the new situation demands. What better words for Advent? Lest we think waiting is tantamount to complacency, that we just sleep and snooze our way through life. Dr. King reminded us that the time is always ripe to do right. The time is always ripe to do right. And so we wait, don't we? Hopefully, expectantly, faithfully, and actively. I want to close with a story by Leo Tolstoy. He tells the story of Martin the Cobbler. He says, Martin is a lonely shoemaker who's promised a dream that Christ will come to visit his humble shop. So the next day, Martin gets up early and he, he goes to the shop and prepares the meal and waits. Well, the only one that shows up in the morning is a blind beggar who comes by and asks for rest. And Martin gives him a room he had prepared for his divine guest. The only one that shows up in the afternoon is an older lady with a heavy load of wood. She was hungry and she asked for some bread and Martin gave her the food he had prepared for his divine guest. Finally, in the evening, a lost boy wanders by Martin took him home, afraid that while he was away, he might miss Christ. But he got him to home, and he came back to his humble shop. And that night in his prayers, he asked the Lord, Where were you? Where were you? I waited for you all day, Lord. And the Lord said to Martin, Three times I came to your family door. Three times my shadow was on your floor. I was a beggar 
with bruised feet. I was a woman you gave to eat. I was the homeless child on the street. Wake up, my friends. Wake up this hopeful season. Christ may be closer than you think. Amen. one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from the heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. 
For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again to, in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, long-lasting droughts, Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for the people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and the witness of those who have died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing, those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we just had Thanksgiving in the rearview mirror, but we're celebrating the new year of the, of the church, which is Advent and we are thankful people. Thankful for you. Thank you for this beautiful staff, this wonderful group of people who do so much for the Lord and the work of the church. And we are thankful that we can do something. We can serve the Lord with our time, our talent, and yes, uh, our, our riches, our, that, our wealth that God gives us. Uh, we share that with cheerful hearts, don't we? And so we give you a chance now uh, on this new year in the church to begin uh, to uh, send us a little something to do God's miracles of, of work. The work, work we do throughout the community is work we do on your behalf. So write a check, go online, do what you can. Know that we thank you and that we are richly blessed.
gathering into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.